Oli, the ambassador has criticized the military coup in his country. Was the takeover of the embassy to be expected? Well, when he did criticize the coup in Myanmar last month, Myanmar had said that he would be recalled, but the ambassador had stayed in London. So I think it was expected that there was going to be some kind of removal process and that it may have to be forced. But clearly the ambassador and many of his staff were surprised by the way it unfolded here at the embassy here in central London. As you can see behind me, there are a couple of dozen or so protesters here making their feelings very much known. There is a police presence continuing here as well. What these demonstrators are saying is that they're calling for an end to the violence in Myanmar. They want the restoration of democracy, but they're also calling very loudly on the UK government to do more. They're saying, Boris Johnson, speak up, speak up. And Oli, how do we anticipate this is going to imp impact diplomatic ties between the UK and Myanmar now? Very strained ties already. Several rounds of sanctions and measures on the military in Myanmar from the UK government. There has been concern, I think, here in London that they may not have been having a huge impact, those sanctions that have already been taken, and that therefore calls into question exactly what the UK may choose to do next in terms of further measures and what impact they may or may not have. But this certainly strains ties further. The UK Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab calling what happened here at the embassy uh, bullying. He has, though, paid tribute to Charles Wamin's courage, as he calls it. And Dominic Raab, the Foreign Secretary, making it very clear that the UK will continue, he says, to call for an end to the coup, the appalling violence, as he describes it, and he says the UK will continue to demand a swift restoration of democracy.